This is a video of a severely matted dog. The video was provided by a groomer friend who has given me permission to show you this. Uh, she's done a fantastic job. She has had to take the dog short for the health and well-being of the dog. Um, it's had to be taken severely short. Yes, it is super short and it does look severe, but it is the kindest um, and best option for this lovely dog. You'll see in the video how it came off in one big felted piece. And this can be so avoidable just with regular brushing and, and grooming at home and regular trips to see the groomer. So let's do some brushing and some combing. Okay, another really quick video. Um, I just wanted to go over some um, maintenance and um, brushing um, help for you. <laughs> For your to keep your dogs uh, maintained in between coming to the groomers. Now, if you're somebody that goes regular to the groomers, so you have a regular schedule, five, six, seven, eight weeks, um, then and you keep them at a short, manageable length, like lovely Lucy here, um, there's a minimal brushing to do at home and uh, minimal, um, it's just a quick flick over. If you are somebody that doesn't go to the groomers regular, you have got a lot more grooming to do. Because <laughs> what you find is when you go to the groomers, if, you, if your dog is overgrown and you haven't been brushing, there's more chance of it matting up and you're just gonna go back to the wood and start again because we will not, or majority of dog groomers um, won't demat dogs. It is against animal welfare. There is an act called the Animal Welfare Act and it's clearly states in there um, that we, who whoever's dealing with your dog, whether it be the vet, the, the groomer, you are not to cause that dog pain and suffering. And to demat a dog can cause pain and suffering. It can cause brush burn. It can really upset your dog. So if you can get yourself into a routine, and I don't want to dictate to anybody, I just want to help. Um, and I do find with literally 100% of my customers, um, they, they probably don't have to do as much brushing because they come on a regular schedule. Um, they can just literally go and enjoy the dogs and um, you know, they might have to do some ears and tail and a quick flick over. So for those people who are going on a regular basis, um, but just want to help maintain your dogs at home by giving them a quick brush through, but you're not sure how to do it or what to use. Um, how I explain it to, to my customers, and I know some of my customers will be watching, so this will help refresh what I'm always banging on about. Um, brushing a comb. Your comb is your best friend um, because that is your knot seeker. Um, also, using a, um, a coat spray will help you um, brush the coat with ease. Sometimes, um, in my opinion, if you're brushing your dog just with the brush, liberally, all over, you're not really doing it much, really. Um, you really need to set aside time, you know, so even if it's half an hour, you know, um, if you've got somewhere to sit them on. Um, when you brush your coat dry, I say dry because this is a dry coat, 
it's got no spray on it anything when you brush the coat you can't risk damaging because um because it's dry it's brittle i know when i comb my hair it's either always wet or slightly damp and it doesn't um kind of break if i brush it when it's dry i tend to make it go knotty unless i put some kind of spray in it so not only will it help you coat the hair shaft and protect it from the brush but it also helps protect it from static so when you're brushing you find that it'll go all staticky and then it will all stick back together and knit so you've just done this lovely brushing and um literally the, there's loads of static that's in your dog's coat um, and it just will you brush it and it it will knit back together so this will help um, not only help uh, coat the hair shaft um, eliminate the static so when you're brushing um, you're not defeating the object um, and also it sort of helps condition your dog's coat as well so um, I generally with my dogs because I keep them short all the time, I just throw them in the bath because um, they're short, throw them in the bath, bath them and I do all the grooming out during the bathing and the, and the blow drying so I don't really need to do a brush in between um, but because you will come, your weeks are further apart than what I might do my dog, say I might do mine every week, if you're doing them every week 100% brownie points um, but because you're going sort of say five six seven eight weeks um, just needs keeping open um, especially with cockapoos and things like that they, they have got a curl to them so keeping that curl open away from the skin will keep them um, will help them to stay mat free um, the curls can hide a multitude of sin although they look lovely um, they they turn in on themselves and and because the mat will build up from the skin outwards the curl sort of hides it so it'll mat up from the skin and it's not brushed and kept open this might be the reason why you get in and shortcuts every time you go to the dog groomers you've got to get to this it's got to be open and free from the skin all the way out so I really hope this is making sense. So, what people call it is is line brushing. You might have heard the term line brushing. I don't call it line brushing. I just say brushing partings um, because partings and sections. I say so. If I'm just going to give the dog a quick flick over before I go in in the bath, just to help open up the coat, um, I do a lot in the bath as you as you might see. Um, I sometimes brush the shampoo and conditioner through while I'm in the bath. Um, it's just uh, one of the things that, that I do. But in the purpose of helping you with your grooming. So I'll just spray over the spray. Um, or you could spray it onto the brush, whichever you feel most comfortable doing. If your dog doesn't like the spray, put it on the brush. So I'm, I'm going to start at the bottom of the foot and work my way up. So what I tend to do is sort of lift up, oops, lift up some hair and brush down. And as you go, you'll see there's a parting. That's why I say partings. So, so if I, I'm, I'm satisfied that that's, that's brushed out. So then I get my magical comb and I make sure that I'm touching skin and I comb it through. If it combs all the way through to the skin, I've cracked it. Um, and then I'll just work my way up the leg. 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 Up the leg. And you can see it comes down in partings and I just push. Lift up down a section at a time 
and if I think in my head, oh, well, it looks like a brush and that's loose enough. Magical comb comes out and then it'll go in. Now, if it, see, that's not quite going through. So I need to go back and I need to brush that, lift that up and brush it more. Maybe I can put some more spray on and the spray will help me break it up. Can you see the hair that's coming on the brush there? That is all the dead coats that, that you want to get out. Because if you don't, and you just continually bath your dog, like some people do, they just think a magical bath is going to make all that the hair go away. It doesn't. You need to brush it out before the bath, and then bath them. And if you're leaving them to air dry, then go back with your spray and your brush, just to open it back over and then your magical comb to go through. So, again, lift up from the bottom, all the way up, all the way up in sections, sections at a time. And liberally just, so now we're gonna check with the magical comb and see if it goes through. There we go, it's going through and there's a little bit of the fur fairy. So that was the basis of why the comb wouldn't go through. So and Lucy isn't a fan of brushing and combing at home. That's why she comes regularly because she doesn't like her mum doing it. So but now my comb will go all the way through. And all the way through. Bingo. So that is literally all you need to do. Um, same with the body. You can go across in sections. Can you see the, there's a line come? And I can see all the way through to the skin. Yeah, and give it a little bit more of a spray go and patterns all the way along, all the way along, all the way along, a section at a time. So then you know that your whole dog has been brushed and combed. So I'm going to go with my comb now. See the comb's not going through. If the comb does not go through, it needs brushing more. It wants brushing until the comb will go all the way through. Maybe put a bit more spray on. And you can go this way, but I prefer to lift up that way, especially when you've got a curly coat. You're lifting it up and you're straightening it, straightening up the hair, and then it'll it'll come out, lift up, section at a time, section at a time, you can see the dead coat that's coming out, and then go down with the comb, is the comb going through? The comb is going through. So all that section there has been brushed and you're going to do it all over. Um, until you, can you see how much dead coat's coming out? See? And that is the stuff that mats up. Um, they call these the non-malting dog. Um, no, well... They, are, they do malt, it's just that it doesn't fall out like it would a Jack Russell. Um, you have to physically brush it out. So, um, yeah, comb, a brush, and some detangler, coat conditioner. Um, you can even um, use a bit of conditioner and water um, I have plenty of dog conditioners that double up 
as a, um, a detangle spray that I've said on my other videos. You just have a little bit of um, conditioner and water and you can use that as a, as a detangle spray. Um, so, so yeah, especially with these high maintenance coats, they've really got to be looked after, you know, especially if you want long fluffy styles. Okay, I mean, it, she doesn't look like, when you look at her, you think, oh, how do you get all that dead coat out of that? It comes, you know, it's, it does. It, um, and if you don't brush it, it is going to, it is going to mass up. <laughs> um, so uh, another thing as well is to separate your um, your grooming from um, other things. Um, I would suggest that you get some kind of um, if there's maybe a garish situation that you could put a rubber top on. If there's someone in your kitchen, you can put a top on them, slip top. Um, it, you know, I've had customers that use their, their bench outside in the garden. You could put a mat on top of that, stop them slipping around, um, make it a regular thing, give them rewards for it as well. And you can build it up little and often. If they don't like you doing it, uh, build it up little and often. Start with the standing or the sitting still. Sitting still and then sit down sweetie. Staying still like this and then um, reward for that and then build it up. Um, you know, then just go with the brush. Reward, put them down and build it up slowly, slowly, slowly. And to the point where, you know, you can go from five minutes to 10 minutes and then you know, and it will really give you a good bond with your, your dog. You know, there might be, you know, 20 minutes of a Sunday um, or, you know, uh, 10 minutes of your day off or, you know, make a big, massive difference. We haven't all got time to be bathing and blow drying our dogs, but if you're going to the groomers regular um, and you're just giving them a, a quick going over to keep that coat open, um, and prevent it from matting, it'll make a massive difference. So if you separate um, grooming from food and play, so what I normally say is like from a, a puppy, um, food and play is on the floor and grooming is on the surface, this is business. So I say this is business, that's grooming and play, so all the fun things. So if you're sitting on the floor and you, you, you do your grooming on the floor, they might consider that playing. Um, so if you separate that, I mean, obviously we, we put them on tables to, to, which ultimately will help us as well, but it does separate. Um, they know that when they go on a table, when they come to the groomers, this is their grooming training, their groom, this is what happens when they come to the groomers. Um, obviously there's those um, owners that don't do a regular thing you know the, you are going to find difficulties um, and it is so hard to to get through to um, some people the importance um, of it because we always tend to be the bad people um, you know they've shaved my dog and, and it's the last thing that we want to do so um, it really starts at home you know, um, and then we can just maintain your dogs, um, and it, it's a lot more pleasurable. If they've got to come to the groomers and they've got to be brushed and, and you know, it's really heavy going, they're not gonna want to come. Not only do they not want to leave the owners in the first place, but it's not a pleasant experience when they do. So, um, I hope that makes, sense to you you can get some lovely grooming sprays uh, i mean this is the lucky one the miracle coat it smells lovely um and it is for all types different types of um coats you can use it on all sorts um and um yeah uh, i mean i've got i've got tons of i've got tons of different sprays I mean, I like the Le Pooch spray as well, which is a good, this is um, a pre, they call it concentrated pre-wash. You can actually, if you get this, the Le Pooch, you could um, 
put this in a smaller bottle and use it as a as a spray. Um, so yeah, so we can't stress enough the fact you know don't just liberally brush your dog is brushed. It's got to go through, especially the high maintenance coats. They have to be you have to go through in parting sections all the way up. And not only that, you you know when you you know you check in at the same time while you do your brushing, you might come across lumps and bumps like we do, or you might see you know oh there's a tick or a flea or something enables you to to keep. Um, and obviously you don't want to sound patronising or anything like that it's all just to help you so and brushes and combs as well I like if you're going to do this on a regular basis um, I would suggest getting a really good brush and a comb uh, because sometimes um, you your combs if you don't get a good comb that's what it ends up looking like can you see that how it's all bumpy and stuff like that. And then when all the teeth are together and stuff, it, it, you can't comb them properly because it's all, you see? I use this as an example because um, this uh, was one of my old grooming combs from back in the day. Um, but I mean, this cost me 45 pounds. It's a Greyhound comb. I have had it for years. Can you see how good that is? So if you invest in some, you know, in, in good equipment, it's going to last you a long time um, and you're going to look after it because it's cost you money. Chris Christiansen brushes, fantastic brushes. There are other ones that are very similar, that are very good. Um, this is, this was 55, excuse me, my stomach. This is 55 pounds. Now I've had this for years. Can you see it's a little bit worn? whatever you but it's fantastic and because she's got a longer a longer hair um i'm going to get in further um you can get the smaller slicker brushes as well um you know if you really wanted a couple of brushes you know, they, these a smaller slicker brush are great for getting in smaller areas, um, like you know faces and things like that. So you could get, you know, a couple of different size brushes on a comb, and you spray, and you're good to go. Um, if you if you look up uh, Chris Christiansen brushes, um, they're a really good brush. I also have um, the Artero uh, dematting brush, which is, I'll get it, I'll show you some brushes. Uh, come here, my sweet. So um, I have the Artero, um, oh, there's a bit of a thing there, Artero um, one. You see the teeth? Now, it looks quite, what's the word? harsh but it's very good if you've got a mat to break up because it sort of breaks through it so if you've got a bit that's maybe a little bit lumpy you could use your spray break it up with the nice um, uh, dematting brush from Artero then go um, you know with your longer one and your finer one you know a lot of these type of ones they're very good for breaking the, up the top of the mat but then obviously the longer teeth will get in further um, and then if you've got chunky bits you can break it up with that one so you know get yourself a part a part um, a plastic tub and just have your your lovely grooming things in um, these brushes are very good you see the bent teeth they really help get in and, and break up and lift out the dead coat um, these are simpsons brushes if you put simpsons dog grooming products you'll get these and this is the the fluffing one um, and you can see there's lots of they're quite flexible so they're not as harsh and there's nice fine teeth on there um, but your comb is really important um, this you can go through with your wider teeth and then once your wider teeth go through if you wanted to check even further you could go with the finer teeth 
so um, yeah if there's anything else that I've missed off there or you think that you want me to touch on please let me know um, but basically a brush you know maybe a, a, a small variation of, of different brushes um, your spray and your comb and obviously your comb is your magical locator <laughs> it will locate your knots and don't pull the comb through go back with the brush um, if that particular brush isn't you know maybe there's a little bit harsher one but don't brush 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 because you can cause brush burn break it you know break it go in different directions and, and break that area up go around it because um, if you if you go um, in the same place too much you can scratch the skin and cause brush burn so try and go in different directions and add some more spray okay sweetie we're gonna go in the bath now aren't we yes um, I hope that helps and I'll give you a quick um, photograph of um, Lucy when she's all done so Lucy Lucy is all trimmed oh she just shook her head there <laughs> Um, she is short, manageable length. I've done a slightly shorter on her body uh, and a little bit longer on on her legs. Um, so obviously um, to avoid, you know, having to shave your dogs off. Because believe me, us groomers do not want to shave dogs. There's too much risk involved. Not only um, from owners that might give us a bit of backlash for shaving their dogs, but um, you know the 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 risk to the skin um, with severe matting. You know you could because uh, a lot of the time the thicker the hair, the thinner the skin. You're so uh, much more likely to catch the skin with a matted dog. Um, you know, with a, a very short blade near skin and, you know, so, some severe, I, I've seen severe uh, matting in my time. Um, I think my, my very worst one was um, a sh two Shih Tzus, mum and daughter, and they were so matted that um, when they were going to the toilet, because they were all matted, they were literally weaning into their feet. I could squeeze their feet and the urine was coming out because they were so matted under here it was connected to the leg you know um and that was very, when i very first had my salon and i had a lady from the chronicle come in was well, wasn't the chronicle there the guardian um come in to do me um an advert <laughs> and uh, she's trying to talk to me while like, i'm uh, busy doing one of the dogs she's like that smell and I, I pointed down to the dog and I said and she's like oh I said yeah I said but she'd be better once she's all shorter um so yeah you know people don't realize that that we we do see stuff like this and we you know when we come and we see the matting it's uh, we we feel that we really need to try and educate to try and help you in a non patronising way um, because it, it is difficult to look after a, um, you know a high maintenance dog it it really is but to avoid it regular grooming it's as simple as that um, think about your lifestyle um, you know if you take them out loads and you want a long fluffy style and you're not ma maintaining it at home you really need to go a lot more regular so you know three four weeks I have dogs that come every three or four weeks um, and they are in tip top condition and their owners brush them in between as well. Um, there are owners and owners and you know we, we as groomers do take responsibility you know when a dog is pre presented to us what we can do so um, we don't want it's no good for our advertising if uh, we've got shaved off dogs or people are not happy because they've got shaved off dogs. 
um, when there's a lot of things that the owners can do to avoid it, you know. Um, and we we do try and work with you as best as we can. And if we say, you know, it's got to come off and we'll start again, we can come regular, we can maintain the style, we can get the balance right um, for your lifestyle and your pets. So it looks the way, you know, you want and it's in a short, you know, practical trim that you can look after and everyone's a winner, aren't they? Um, there is the money issue. It's like, for instance, um, I've got dogs that come and say, what, six weeks? £45 every six weeks. What's that? £7.50 a week. Um, you know, um, obviously the, the bigger salons, you, you're going to pay more because they've got more overheads. They pay more people. Um, and I mean, I don't forget, don't, don't get me wrong. I've got my own overheads and I've got the extra because I've got the building that I made but it, you know it's the same it's the same for everybody in business you know we've, we've all got wages and overheads and all the rest of it um, so that's a whole new that's a whole different conversation anyway but yeah so Lucy comes every six weeks a short manageable um, short manageable style um, a mum she doesn't like a mum brushing her so Auntie Wendy does it, but she comes regular, it's all sorted. <laughs> and she'll get a compliment on how, you know, lovely a dog looks as well. Nobody really notices a shaved off dog, really. Um, I know if, if I see a shaved off dog, I'm like, I wonder if it was matted. That's the first thing that, that comes to my head. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we're here to help you maintain your dogs to avoid shaving at all costs, but if it has to be done, it has to be done. Um, your comb, your brush, your spray, um, you know, that's that's all it is. And, and uh, you know, making sure that you've gone through the dog right to the skin um, because um, you might, look at the top and think oh it's not matted but it, it's from the skin line outwards and um some people might say well i'd be happy with this length but you still got to be groomed out to be able to get to this length um so that's why we maintain them on a regular basis so um i hope that helps so i don't want to dictate to people we want to help you look after your your pets uh, we're he here to help you and your pet and um, you know not shave not shave unless you want us to i say there's two reasons why uh, we go short it's one i'm asked i'm asked to the second is i've had to so um yeah keep coming everyone <laughs> So I'm quickly going to go over these brushes that I've just laid out here, the ones I like using. These are the Colin Taylor ones, the little ones that I use for, for faces. Um, one slightly bigger than the other. Uh, they feel lovely to hold. So these two brushes there, the one on the left, on my left, is a Chris Christensen brush, the one that's face down. The other one is similar to the Chris Christensen, but didn't cost as much. And I got that from Alexa Groom My Dog, and I'll put a link for that. These are the Simpson brushes. The green one is a fluff one. The purple one there I use for a de-shedding type brush. And the red one is a firm uh, matting brush. The blue one there with the blue handle, that one is the Artero uh, matte brush, that's awesome. These are another couple of brushes that I've had from uh, Colin Taylor products. Uh, one with the short teeth and another one with teeth that are slightly longer. And uh, you'll just see there. So these are three of my favourite combs. The green one is a greyhound comb with the wider teeth and then the finer teeth. And the gold one is um, 
also a greyhound comb, but it's slightly longer. And I've got a, a, a butter comb, which I had from Colin Taylor. So these are the sprays that I use. I've made this one up from the Ultimate Ultimut Conditioner, the Hypernot Matex by Atero. One from Lackey there, which is a scissor spray too, and the Lapooch spray that I love. And this is it condensed down into a little spray bottle, which I use for fast drying, anti-static, volumizing, conditioning spray. So it's all, um, it's a good all round spray that you know you can condense down from the bigger um, conditioner bottle.